I have been dealing with the prenatal diagnosis last 15 years and my focus has been uh, early diagnosis of the fetal hearts. If the patient comes and gets the first trimester screening test, including nuchal translucency scan, I think that we are obligated to check the fourth chamber heart because we know that fetal heart anomalies are number one in the fetus, is the most common one, and majority of the fetal abnormalities can be picked by just looking at the fourth chamber. The heart is one of the first organs who develop, so by the time the patient comes to us at, at that period, between 11 to 13 plus 6 weeks, the four-chamber heart and the outflow tract, it's already been developed. Unfortunately, um, the four-chamber of the heart is not in, in required to be checked in the guidelines. It is, uh, the guidelines tells us to check the fetal heart rate and fetal heartbeat, but the details about the heart in, in, in guidelines that we have in our hand, it doesn't tell us in the first trimester. My point here is, there's a lot of benefits of early diagnosis, okay? Because in the early diagnosis, um, you can manage the pregnancy much better way. You can educate, you have um, you know, uh, more time to educate the parents what's coming and what needs to be done because based on the problem, you are going to determine your steps in the process. I came to University of Maryland for a fetal heart scan when in 2018, my baby was diagnosed with HLHS. So we were looking for hospitals of where to get care for when he was born. So we came here and that's how I met Dr. Turan. He was born October 23rd, 2018, and he ended up having to go right into surgery to help fix his heart condition. Um, and he eventually passed away seven weeks later after having complications from all of that. I think us going into another pregnancy was very important to us to have as much early care that we possibly, I know you can't change the outcome of something like HLHS, but just to be able to know and be able to call Dr. Turan and say, we're pregnant, you know, and her to say, I want to see you right away at 12 weeks, just to give you peace of mind that everything's okay, was so um, comforting to us. And we're very grateful. You see it, look, look at the camera. Look at my, look at my camera and say, hi, I'm Stella. <laughs> this is Stella. Stella and Bo. Right? So I had a baby. We had Bo on March 23rd of 2020, which I think was the official shutdown date of Maryland for all of the COVID, which was very interesting. Um, but yeah, so he's here now. He's getting nice and big, which is awesome. He goes for his four month checkup soon. So everything's been really good. Look, he's even looking at the camera. <laughs> for me, especially knowing that at, since we already had a baby with a heart defect and finding out at 20 weeks, we didn't know any different at the time, but having a second child after that to ensure that we were either in the clear or had to look for medical advice. It was way more calming to be able to know at 12 weeks that everything was looking good. To me, not being a doctor, it's basically a sonogram, but they are looking at the blood flow to and from the heart. They're looking at the growth of all of the heart chambers. They're looking at how the heart is connected to the lungs and it's very intricate organ and obviously a very vital part of our body. So to have everything known in working condition and to make sure that all of those chambers and everything is formed is obviously very important. We, at least at 12 weeks, were like, okay, the heart is fully formed. All the other organs look good. Let's just keep growing a healthy human.